Hi, I'm Ryan Dixon, and welcome to CLE Live's second show of the school year. I'm here with my co-host. Hi, I'm Ajara Skarbekova, and today we have a wide range of stories from our very own seniors all the way to the newest members of Howe High School. Today we're going to start off with CLE Live reporter Justin Lin's story about foreign exchange students here at Howe. Justin interviewed two of the students, my co-host Ajar and Elza Milan. I'm from Kazakhstan. It is a country in Asia between Russia and China. Okay, for any teenager abroad, America is like a dream. And of course you dream about California or Florida or at least New York City and Chicago. <laughs> and then they told me that I'm going to Oklahoma State, that was the first time I heard about Oklahoma State. <laughs> and then they told me that it will be the city about, uh, with a population about 700 people. Whenever I had students in my school, like 1,500. Uh, yeah, that was kind of different. I have, I have a pretty big family. I have grandmother, grandfather, father, mother, and my little brother. I'm from Ukraine. Thanksgiving, it was my first Thanksgiving and first Halloween and I was really excited and some of that traditions I would like to repeat at home and Christmas cookies. <laughs> I really was excited about it and that's my favorite part of Christmas actually. School over here is really easy and uh, we don't have Mm, too much homeworks in how how we do in Ukraine and we can't choose any classes in Ukraine like we have 24 classes and we should learn them all we can't choose anything my name is Caitlin and you're watching CLE live Ajar seeing that this is all new to you like um it was pretty frustrating for my first time since I've never been interviewed before however I found it quite interesting Sir, aren't you a senior this year? Yes, I am. This is as exciting as nerve-wracking at the same time. So how's the preparation going? It's going as it can. I mean colleges, applications, tests and grades, all of this is pretty complicated, but you have to deal with that. Ryan, speaking of preparation, let's see how other seniors are doing with help of Steely Life reporter Connor Shepard. Well, academically speaking, seniors would need to have all of their credits in order. Um, by the time that someone reaches senior status, they should have over 18 credits. There are different things that they can do. The first thing I like for them to do is to go online and find out what is available at different schools to figure out which school they would like to attend. Once they narrow it down to the specific school that they're wanting to go to, typically schools have online application processes that they can go through. And so it might be that you hop online and do the application and, and do it electronically. Make sure that you pass all your classes. Make sure that your GPA stays, stays above, well, really a minimal GPA that any student should have in my eyes would be the 2.5 because so many things require at least a 2.5 to better your chances of enrollment and to better your chances just in general. Locally, KTC is a wonderful resource for us to use. Um, a lot of our juniors and seniors um, are attending KTC right now and some will continue to do that once they graduate. Something to keep in mind, I think that's very important that KTC started fairly recently in the last year or two. They will offer free tuition for those students who are graduating from local schools. My name's Angela and you're watching CLE Live. Wow, it seems to be really hard to be a senior. However, I've heard there's a lot of benefits, such as in the end of the year school senior trip. Yeah. Let's head to CLA Live reporter Michaela Coffin as she digs deep to find out what it is. Okay, uh, we'll probably start planning that uh, sometime next month, uh, probably early next month, uh, because with how short our schedule is this year, since we get out of school a little earlier than we have been in the past, uh, we'll probably end of April uh, be going on our senior trip, so we want at least a couple months to plan that out. So. Probably sometime beginning of February to the middle of February. Uh, we have had a couple uh, for fundraisers and we have done one um, 
it's for the most part uh, just low attendance to them whenever we do that and low participation. Um, so we have had a few, but not that many because usually when we do, it's you know nothing. It's not as productive as, uh, as we would hope. And, uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, some of them just Magic Springs is always a thing because it's close. Uh, since we can't stay overnight anywhere, it's a thing where you don't have to leave super early in the morning and you can get back. You can stay there a little later because it only takes a couple hours to get there. Um, so Magic Springs is always a good one. Um, Oklahoma City uh, is a thing that a lot of people want to go to. Tulsa for the same reason. You know, just to, you can do more stuff there because you can stay there longer. Because uh, again, we can't stay overnight. My name is Hayden Wooten. You're watching CLE Live. Even though I am a senior, I didn't know that it would be so much fun. I look forward to making more American memories now. Let's take a break from talking about the seniors to focus on everyone else. I've heard some students have talents that you may not have known about. That's true. Some of the students and staff at How High School are more than they appear. See Live Reporter does a while track down several hidden talents among our students and staff. You may just be surprised. Hear the story. I don't know how to explain it. My hidden talent is my thumbs. I can cross only one eye. I think it's just kind of cracks students up. Sometimes it takes them by surprise. <laughs> I can speak German. It has helped me decide a career path because now that I can speak German, I like I would like to move to Germany and teach German. Um, hello, ich heiße Julian, and that's hello. My name's Julian. <laughs> well, some people think my hidden talent is rapping, and so I don't rap very often. But my real hidden talent is the ability to do from a stand up jump and do a complete toe touch. I have had this hidden talent for approximately 20 years. Well, it occasionally has ripped the crotch out of my pants on at least two occasions. So I will do my best, no promises. All right, here we go. One, two, three. I sing. Is there a way right for how this goes? You got your friends and you got your foes. You want a piece of something high? Forget your name like they forgot. My hidden talent is uh, playing the guitar. I have been invited to be involved in the church uh, band at uh, my church. I've met wonderful people uh, with the talent. I've, it's, it's led me to meet those people um, that have affected my life in a positive way. singer but I started playing the ukulele over this summer. <clears throat> she asked me son when I go to the next story is CLE Live reporter Zochi Valdez with this year's archery team and how they're doing this year. Here's the story. Uh, archery is a primitive method uh, that uh, was used in the past for hunting, self-defense. Uh, it is uh, today a recreational sport as well as a hunting sport. Uh, the rules are simple. You want to be safe. You want to make sure where your shot's going, where it's not going, and that nobody gets hurt. Uh, safety is primary uh, focus, making sure everybody's safe. Uh, orderly, uh, everything's done in an orderly fashion. Um, there's no mistakes made. Uh, to be eligible, you need to be passing your classes. Uh, that's basically the only requirement we have that you're interested. Practicing, that's been a little hard. We've been in the weight room, but we've been having to move weights and then move weights back. It's, it's a little uh, 
tough finding a, an area to practice. Here recently we've been practicing starting at 7 o'clock in the morning, trying to get in the morning time so that people can have some time to shoot. And uh, we're in the uh, weight room in the gym. At this point, uh, I want the team to have fun, enjoy what they're doing. Uh, the competitive side will come, but right now I just want people to be interested and be involved and hopefully out of that will get really competitive and serious. In general, uh, practice always improves your scores and uh, uh, just uh, relax, don't get so stressed out that you can't, uh, you can't focus uh, and just have fun with it. That's what it's, that's, that's what it's there for. To compete and uh, working in pressure is, is, is fun, it's different. Uh, archery is where we can all get together and have a common goal to get to the end of the year and shoot at a at a certain point. My name's Natalie Farrar and you're watching CLE Live. I've been in many tournaments and won many prizes as well in archery. However, all of this was in the past, wasn't it? Actually, to be honest, archery was my biggest childhood dream and can you imagine how I felt when I found out that there is an archery team in our school? Even though I joined too late and not qualify for states, I'm so very happy. Well, anyway, I am so very happy for you. It is so cool to have more skills and talents in different areas. Speaking of different talents, Ryan, did you know that we have LEGO League? Cannot wait to see what these amazing kids can do and create with help of our reporter Shyla Pointer with the following story. First Lego League is an international competition and it's for ages 9 through 14 for First Lego League. And they have four different areas of competition that they do. And they have a robotics game, they have robot design, they have a project that's a real world problem that the teams work together to solve and create a new solution. And then they have core values, which is the teamwork as aspect of it. I saw this as a really good opportunity for the students who are interested in robotics and in engineering and STEM, the STEM field. When I heard about First Lego League, I saw it as a way to really incorporate some real world problem solving skills with robotics that the kids naturally love and it's just been a hit. I just wanted to get in Lego League to be in like a team. I just want to accomplish to be better at robotics and stuff with, through Lego League. I want to join First Lego League because I like working as a team and I like robotics and programming. I want them to be able to think. I want the students to come up against a problem and have to use skills that we don't necessarily think about in a classroom setting, but that you actually face in everyday life. And so this year's problem was, how do animals and humans interact? Is there a way that we could improve that? Somebody's getting hurt, either the animal or the human. And so the kids have to work together to come up with a solution that really solves this problem. And it's amazing how creative they are and um, just to watch them develop that thinking, problem solving, working together, it's priceless. I accomplished learning how to work together as a team and helping friends. I want to accomplish being a better team player and working well with others. I was super proud of these guys. This is a rookie team, so this is their very first year. Didn't have any idea of what to expect going into the regional qualifying. They, did, they scored the worst in teamwork at regionals as far as our scores overall. They did great in mechanical design, did great at the robot game, but we scored really low in core values and in teamwork. And so from November to December, the guys really worked on becoming more of a team, working together and encouraging each other. So it must have really paid off at state. I didn't even think we were going to go to state, really. But. Whenever they said we won first place in teamwork, that really blew my mind. Our teamwork was really good because not a lot of people can get the teamwork award. It was pretty cool. I was like, well, we accomplished something. Speaking of making toys, Ajar, have you noticed all the sweet cars that drive up to the admin building lately? Oh, sure I did. It is as impressive as interesting for me. Because I don't know if you knew, but I cannot drive here, even though I'm 17 years old and senior. 
Well, speaking of sweet cars, our reporter Michael Bland caught up with the superintendent, Mr. Paris, for the second time to ask about his toy, and here's the story. Um, I actually bought it off of a, a body shop friend of mine. Uh, his name is Dusty Cox out of Pecola. I've known him for years, being that I used to do paint and body work and uh, some grand up restorations. He approached me and said, uh, here's a project I'm not going to finish. It's uh, it, it's been started. Um, I basically told him I couldn't afford it, and he said I can make it to where you can not refuse it. It's, um, it's a 47 Ford Coupe Super Deluxe, which is kind of unique in that um, it's the, when, when you look at the style trim, it's the, the deluxe version of what Ford built back in the day. It is a, uh, a V8 automatic car, uh, which was um, not completely what it was during the day. It, it originally was a, uh, a flathead V8 back in the day, but now it's a, uh, been, been modernized with a, um, a newer engine and transmission combo. Uh, 47 Ford Coupe, uh, it's, it's based on the uh, body style. It's one of only three years that Ford made this. Just drivability. I mean, it's just a fun car to get in and go. It drives extremely well. goes down the highway. Um, uh, good. They're, they're, they're a pretty heavy car. Uh, a lot of street rods tend to be um, quite a bit lighter, therefore their, their handling characteristics are not as good as you would hope. I have, um, I, I mentioned to you before, I'm working on a project truck. Uh, it's similar to our green 53 that I drive. Uh, that's Mrs. Parks' truck, if you will. Um, she likes to, to laugh about that. She never gets to drive it, but it's her truck. The News Club at HHS is the theater club, and so far I think it's been a kickoff just saying I'm quite an actor. Here's our reporter Mario Perez with the story. Theater Club is a group of students who decided to get together and they wanted to do some acting and so they came and approached me and asked me if I would sponsor a theater club for them. Dawson Jameson originally came up with the idea. I think it's a really cool project since the school had a lot of you know budget cuts and we didn't have a lot of fine arts available to students anymore. I'm glad that we're adding stuff like a drama club and like choir and everything like that. I think it's actually an amazing thing. I've always been a person who loves to act and be out there on stage and have the spotlight. So theater club for me was just something that I have always enjoyed and I've always wanted to have one at school. I just think students really need to join and get out there and I think it'd be really cool and it helps with um, confidence to put yourself out there and just try something new that no one has ever tried before. Well the drama programs and the classes they don't do much anymore in the way of actually acting. It's more, say, drama history and stuff. So I figured, since there were some people who prefer acting on stage um, than to reading, might as well start a club. I mean, we have about 10 members right now. We meet usually every week unless deadlines get in the way. Feel free to come in during our meetings any time. Usually Friday at lunch in Miss Horn's room. I mean, do hello. I want to see you live. One of the hardest musical instruments has caught the eye of a few high school students. Here's our very own anchor Ryan Dixon with this story. I've only been playing guitar for about five months, five to six months. Uh, what got me into playing really was my dad getting on my butt, um, talking to me all the time about playing guitar and getting in a band and everything. Uh, my first guitar was actually my Eston Bond. My, well, my first real guitar was my Estenbon Midnight Moon, which uh, it's an acoustic electric, so the first song I learned to play was actually the Harry Potter theme song. I can play, I can play Every Rose Has a Thorn, I can play uh, the Harry Potter theme song, I can play one part of Black Magic Woman, uh, I can play the holiday uh, solo. I play the drums, I play the bass, uh, I'm dabbling in some uh, keyboard type of things, and that's about it. Um, my favorite song to play right now is Every Rose of the Storm because it's, you can mash it up with different songs. I can play almost anything really. I play a lot of worship songs, country songs, pop songs, uh, anything that I could figure a chord out to I can play. I have a keyboard. Um, 
I've been wanting to learn it, but I haven't had the time to sit down and learn it. It's really, it's a lot different than the guitar. Probably Spirit Wind by Casting Crowns, one of my favorite worship songs, and then uh, anything by Ed Sheeran is really different and it's very dynamic and it's, it's fun to play. So. Well, I've only been playing guitar for like three or four weeks now, and uh, I just think it's really interesting. Uh, my first guitar is a Zenni Electric. It is a six string, and uh, it's, it's, it's all right. Uh, first song that I learned to play was Zombies by the Cranberries. I can play uh, Zombie by the Cranberries. I can play a little bit of uh, Master of Puppets by Metallica. And I could play a little bit of Johnny Cash, and that's about it. I'm Lauren, I'm a senior, and you're watching CLE Live. Oh, how awesome. I always wanted to be able to play the guitar, but I just can't. Maybe I'm just in town. Sure, just let it go. Let it go, let it go. We all, we've all heard this song more than one time in the past three years. Some of us have fallen in love and can't stop hitting the repeat button. Lucky for Howe High School, the show choir main attraction performed two weeks ago was the production Frozen. Here is the CLE Live reporter, Callie Burgess, with the story. Frozen started out as we wanted to do something for the winter time, and everybody loves Frozen, the, the movie and we have the cast to be able to pull that off. So a lot of what we do depends on who we have available to do the parts. So it's gonna be neat because you're gonna see Anna and Elsa and Hans and Sven and Kristoff, Olaf, your favorite characters, and hopefully they'll come to life in a way that the little kids will just really love it. Well, last year the sh we only did like one show, one or two shows, and like it wasn't a show. It was just we sang the music and did like a little bit of dancing. But like this year, you know, <clears throat> with like Frozen and um, our little shop of horrors during Halloween, we did like the dancing and the singing and like the acting parts and like it was more of a show. And plus there are more people this year. We have more guys, we have more girls. We've been working on it since like November. It, like we had to put together like those big sets and like learn all the words and learn all the singing and learn all the dancing that Julianne wrote and like make up all of these sets from scratch like off ideas on Pinterest and stuff like that. Um, we had to build everything from scratch, all the props and all the backdrop and everything. It's just foam and wood painted. Yep. <laughs> it's hard and we all know it's hard. Like this is way too much for anyone to learn <laughs> yeah. in two weeks, but, but we're gonna it's learn hard, it but we're gonna learn it. And so it, you need to have a good attitude and I mean be able to sing, but if you can't, then whatever. Just get in there and dance. Yeah. You're gonna learn stuff. It's a class, just do your best. <laughs> well, if you haven't heard, it's a ton of fun, and it does require a lot of commitment uh, because we work every day, and I think the investment pays off, but if you're willing to work, I think it's really a great opportunity for you to become involved in school and in an activity you can enjoy the rest of your life. A uh, shift from talents to a more serious story. Mental health is a solemn issue that has plagued many people for centuries. As we grew more advanced and gained more stress on our shoulders, we have gained a higher rate of people that suffer from this. This is why people, especially high school students, should be more informed on mental health. Here's CLE Live reporter Jada Hunt with the story. I see students all the time who have mental health issues, have some problems that are, are pretty basic that I feel like if they just had some, some basic coping skills, ways to handle those problems, they'd be better equipped to function here at school and, and maybe function you know, in their own lives at home and those sorts of things. Um, I think it's something that we all need to consider as, uh, as we go to uh, deal with people out in society, in our jobs, or uh, maybe even in our homes. It's something that is clearly relevant to all those people that you're around just on a daily basis. And so I think that makes it something that is important. 
here at Howe, we, we don't have um, a setting that would offer therapy services. So, so what happens in those particular cases is they get referred out to local mental health agencies. And so if a student is dealing with something that would be a little, um, a little more significant than um, just some of, ba some of the basic issues, they do get referred out to uh, local therapists to be seen on a more regular basis than what uh, perhaps I could see them as a school counselor. There are different things that we do, but typically, typically students that are facing mental health issues do get referred to the school counselor. So most of the time, um, if it's issues or problems that occur throughout what I would call a normal school day here at Howe School, they might get referred to come visit with me. And it really just depends on the situation. I would like to see Howe have a class that pertains to mental health. Um, I think it would be somewhat wishful thinking or positive thinking on my part just because it's something that I'm interested in, but I would certainly like that to be an option. Oh, I would absolutely, I would absolutely love to see coping skills taught in a classroom. Just mental health um, in relation to coping skill or coping skills in relation to mental health rather. I would love to see students be equipped to deal with any mental health problems that might arise for them. I think a class such as a mental health class would would really help teach them some some good coping coping skills, coping mechanisms that could get them through to where uh, when they are having problems, um, having mental health issues, they could take care of them, themselves without having to seek uh, outside help or, or seek um, counseling, that they could just kind of uh, take care of them themselves. And so that would be my goal in having a mental health class here at our school. I can really relate to this story because my cousin has... We all have heard a lot about different situations regarding to the news and articles about discrimination against females, whether it's certain kind of position at work or education issues. In this story, we will be able to know and hear what our HHS students think about that own problem. Here's my co-host, Ajar, with the story. I have seen at least a few examples of discrimination against women. I haven't really seen or, you know, but I've heard um, of women being treated unfairly. And yes, I've you know, seen it. It's, it's maybe not so blatant here as it is in other places, but, you know, there are uh, women do get treated very differently. I've never personally experienced it. Um, I've seen a few cases where women were treated differently than men or below men. I've heard of women talking about how they've been discriminated, and I'm sure it's happened before, but personally, I've never seen it. Honestly, it didn't really affect me because I didn't experience it, and I've never really taken it personal, so it didn't really affect me. Yes, it did, because um, <clears throat> I guess in a way, or in a sense that, you know, I have a sister, and for one, like, or my mom, and the way that um, this individual or these individuals have, you know, spoken down to a woman. Well, I mean, you know, it's it stinks seeing that a woman, um, or it's it's unfair to see that a woman is treated that way simply because they are a woman, and not by the merit of what they've done. Probably didn't affect me personally so much because, like, I'm not a woman, and so I don't experience that. But it just kind of like makes me feel bad. Like that sucks. You shouldn't be discriminated against for anything. If I can do anything, if it's like a if I can do anything to help, I would, but it's not really something that I bother to pay attention to. I guess, like, setting an example for, you know, other males, like, I guess, you know, I have three younger brothers, and I mean, just setting the example on how to talk to a lady or a woman or my mom um, is a big situation for me, so my younger brothers could learn from that. I just think it's about how you're raised. Like, I mean, this sounds kind of vain but I feel like I was raised in a pretty good home and so like I'm not I don't discriminate against people and like I don't care what you look like or like whether you're a dude or a dudette. That's a hard question because it's it's nothing that we really at right now could change unfortunately uh, it's something that 
would take years and generations to change of just people thinking that that doesn't matter. Hey guys, here's the thing I'd like to ask all of you. Didn't you notice anything weird up here? Ryan, tell them. Uh, well, I kind of dyed my hair and I forgot that all this would happen. Yeah. I became a Twilight Vampire. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the end of another fun newscast. Uh, I'm your anchor, Ryan Dixon. And I'm your co-host, Jaros Karbekova. Thank you for joining us today. This has been Silly Love, and have a good day!